Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the top four Alma Cat combos for EDH. These are pretty creative. So let's go with Necrotic Ooze, Devoted Druid, and Chandler Initiate. What I love about this is Devoted Druid, which is a $6 common now, and Chandler Initiate is, they are like reverse opposites of each other, which allows you to get the infinite combo with Necrotic Ooze. Now you do need both of these cards to be in the graveyard. You need the Druid as well as the Initiate to be in the graveyard. But once into the graveyard, your Necrotic Ooze will have the ability to produce unlimited mana of any color. It's going to steal the second ability of the Devo Devoted Druid, which is put a minus one, minus one counter on it, untap it, so you can get the minus one minus one counters which with the chandler it feeds itself because you can untap it and you can remove the minus one minus one counters on it and you can add a mana of any color so it's pretty simple what you need to do is you need to get both the druid and the initiate into your graveyard this is also a modern playable combo maybe not the best i i feel like in ed it's it's actually easier to achieve given the, that the fact you are in black and black has all the best tutor abilities. So put these two in your graveyard. It doesn't really matter how they get there. Assuming that they are in your graveyard, your ooze is gonna copy both effects. And now you will have a infinite mana producer of any color. The ooze has always been very good and it might be worth picking up a playset if you already don't own them. To my belief, I haven't seen the price spike on the card yet, but something like this is very symmetrical. It feels perfect for a combo deck, and the fact that these cards are printed so far apart from each other, but they are the perfect combo, and Ooze makes it happen. There is the, one of the reasons some of these cards are spiking not only due to the minus one, minus one counters, the fact that they exist in Amaket, but due to the new Amaket commander, which we will get to a little later. People making a commander deck using the green black uh, legendary creature, and it's interesting because it's unique. And again, as we talked about, when you have unique cards, they tend to go up in price eventually. I can't tell you if it's today can't tell you if it's tomorrow, but I can tell you that it will be eventual. Talking about unique cards, Shadow of the Grave. So what you want to do with Shadow of the Grave, you don't necessarily want to cycle. Uh, one of the reasons you don't want to cycle is discarding is just so much easier. So in this case, you can use your enraged discarded card and it deals free damage to target creature or player. Or discard a land card. So you need to draw lots of land, which in EDH is relatively easy, and you need to be in tri-colors. You need to be in red, green, and black, and you need to at least have this giant 8-drop on the battlefield. So not the easiest combo to pull off, but nonetheless, it is kind of cool. You are going to discard lots of land cards, then you're going to play Shadow of the Grave to put those land cards back in your hand. To discard them again and if you have a snapcaster mage or something that can replay the shadow of the grave yes super expensive not realistic then you can get back even more cards and do even more damage so i thought the combo was unique it is something where i'm sure there's a better card for it maybe the enraged is just too much and not in the right colors but the shadow of the grave i can tell you is a very unique effect i haven't really seen anything like this before now i have seen cards that have been limited to cycling or making you forcing you to do something that's not great but the fact that you can return to your hand all cards in your graveyard that you cycled or discarded the key word here is not cycled because cycling is meh it's discarded because there are many ways to discard cards, and even in standard, you have madness enablers, you have, and there's many reasons you want to discard cards, because if it's a madness card, you actually get a benefit from it. I've been a big fan of this strategy since, well, Odyssey. Wild Mongrel was like the best card ever, 
and it was deceivingly powerful because what you would do is you would discard cards in your graveyard, flash them back for cheaper, and really get advantageous while your Mongol is going to be a black creature. Back then, like re black removal can hit black creatures. Now it can, which I've always felt like it was odd. That's been like a really strange shift because I, if you've been playing Magic for a while, you still don't think that black spells should hit black creatures. They should hit every single other uh, creature type or uh, creature color, but not black creatures. So let's talk about probably the most relevant combo and the reason this is a $6 card. There's many combos for Devoted Druid. Um, even before Amaket, there was one with the quills, uh, that quill card. But visors are remedies. One in white, if one or more minus one minus one counters would be put on a creature you control. That many minus one minus one counters minus one is put on it instead. You can trigger this infinite amount of times and every time you don't get a counter, you get to untap it. You're going to produce infinite amount of green mana, which honestly, if you don't have like a plan to win with infinite mana, you're probably not playing the right deck. So this is one of the stronger cards in Modern, or this is one of the more playable cards in Modern. I'm very grateful that they printed this card as an uncommon. So the uncommon, since it's very recent, will not really be pricey. It's just not gonna be pricey because it's so recent and people already kind of, they're gonna open lots of this uncommon because it's a recent set. Now the Devoted Druid, that is the $6 common Lintz Pints. Um, Lintz Pints? Lin Lin's pin. Okay, li yeah, Lin's pin. Okay. Because it's old. And I don't know if it's easy to reprint this card. It is an elf. So maybe they do elf tribal and it is in the iconic masters, which would be interesting, would be really smart of them. But I believe they had to pick iconic masters. I guess they knew that the minus one minus one counters were coming out and this was probably good, going to be a good card. But I've seen commons get up to very pricey levels. A $6, $7 common is very aggressive. Could it hit $10? Yes. This card can hit $10 based on its casual appeal alone. And should it see any modern play in the top eights, it will get there. Uh, it's one of the things that if you have any shadow more at all, it's time to go to your bulk because you probably have lots of these because they were common Shadow Moor, I'm almost certain, is a small set. Uh, I went through my two. I went through two booster boxes of Shadow Moor, and or no, three booster boxes of Shadow Moor, half a case of the things I drafted with my friends a few years ago. And you just have so many of this because it's a common, but it's even more than like what I would figure a common would have. You, if you have Shadow Moor, you have done well. If you drafted during Shadow Moor, you have done well. And this is one of my favorite first picks. I think I'm pretty sure I wasn't, I'm still not very good at magic, but I would still first pick this because it's an O2 mana acceleration. Mana acceleration has always been very good back in the day. Talking about Shadow Moor, the Blowfly Infant Station, which is also uncommon from there, also four or five dollars, not quite as expensive as the Druid, but it's doing well. Uh, two and a black, whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, if it had a minus one, minus one counter on it, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Now, this Haptraza, Visor of Poisons, is the EDA's commander everyone's building. And that's the reason that a lot of these cards have been spiking in price. It is a black, a green, legendary creature whenever it deals combat damage to player. So you do have to hit a player, which is okay because you can attack when... If you curve this out, it's not actually bad. It may be modern playable. I don't want to say it is because it feels weaker than most combos, but it's curving it out is pretty good. So you have to hit your deal combo damage to a player. That's probably the hardest thing to do in modern without being lightning bolted. And you can put a minus one, minus one counter and target creature. So you do need, you can put it on this creature and whenever you put a minus one, put a one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature you get a one one green snake token but then whenever a creature is put into a graveyard 
if it had a minus one, minus one counter on it, you can put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. So what you're gonna do is you have to hit your opponent and you have to make a snake or you have to have a one, one or a O oh, one, maybe a scion some, some type. And you're gonna put the minus one, minus one counter from hitting the player onto uh, that creature, that creature, creature will die. And when the creature dies, and it's put in the graveyard from play, if it had minus one, minus one counter on it, you get to put another minus one, minus one counter on another target creature, which then triggers the snake ability. So hopefully someone in the comment section can explain this a little bit better. It does work, and it is one of the mm, more modern playable combos, I feel like. Combo is very weak now. They don't want combo to be strong. If you're going to play a combo and you're in the green black anyway, because that's the combo colors, this will come out of nowhere and it will get some people. Anyway, leave me a comment below if you guys are excited for these combos or if you have another combo involving Amaket cards that you want me to do a video on. Anyway, bye guys.